huge welcome um, and we're excited to be working with you. Uh, so what we focus on is helping our early stage researchers, potential academic leaders and really anyone who has an interest uh, in open science uh, practice. So you don't have to be an early stage career if you want to still go through the program, that's fine as well. Uh, and one of our focuses is to make sure that you become an ambassador for open science. So whilst we, we have everyone applying with a specific project that you may be working on, we hope that this will actually apply to all aspects of the, um, the science and the research that you're working on and that hopefully this will be something you can also pass on to others in the future. Um, and again, we can only really advance when we're actually working with, with, with other people rather than against other people, um, building on each other's successes. Um, uh, but one of the problems is that people are often afraid of actually sharing. Uh, we try and break down as many barriers here as we can, um, as well as some of the fears that may or may not actually be things that people tend to encounter all that often. Uh, so some, some of these fears might be being criticized or being scooped. Um, but we, we, we like to talk about working uh, openly without feeling vulnerable or without worry, having to worry so much about, some, about these types of things. Uh, so we will be working uh, one step at a time to go through some of these steps. So you may have already looked at the Open Life Science Syllabus. In fact, if you've applied, there's a very good chance you've spent quite a long time looking at this. Um, but because we have this over a whole 16 weeks, it sort of means that we, we touch on a few concepts and then you have a week or two to actually apply it to your project. And then we touch on more concepts. And this means that rather than this being a concentrated, you know, one week program or something, it means that you have a lot of time to reflect and reapply and work on things in between all of the cohort calls. And then there's also your mentors who will speak with you on every other week to actually chat about how, how this is going and reflect and figure out and act as an external viewpoint. Um, and so the cohort covers the cohort based training. So this will be things like today. Today is largely an intro, but we will go into a lot more um, specific subjects over the next 16 weeks. We also have the one on one mentoring. And then the hands-on practice is really up to uh, you as project lead. So this is the part where you apply what we've been learning to your projects. Um, and one thing that you will see us talking about a lot is the Mozilla Open Leadership Framework. So uh, the Open Life Science was born as um, a, the child of the Mozilla Open Leaders. Um, that doesn't run anymore, actually, but they've left a lot of amazing materials. So occasionally you may see Mozilla on some of our slides or on some of the handouts that we provide. Uh, because they, they launched a bunch of different amazing uh, open leadership style programs. This one specifically focuses on open science, but this has also been applied to AI and to hardware and to uh, many, many other different areas um, that people are actually applying the open leadership framework. And it basically is a way of build, uh, structuring building community and building um, collaboration and pathways into the projects that you're working on. And um, this is a phrase that you will also see a lot of the time and we often bold different parts of it depending on what we're actually talking about. Uh, so I'll read it out. Open leaders design, build and empower their projects and communities for understanding, sharing and participation and inclusion. Uh, so depending on the lesson that we may be teaching in any given week, we may be talking about the empowering or we may be talking about the designing or some other part. So we, you'll see this um, repeated a lot, but with a different emphasis each time as we go through. And this is part of the Mozilla Open Leadership Framework. So this is again a slide you may see a lot. We will highlight different uh, boxes within this or different bullet points within this as we go along. Um, but it just sort of gives you an idea of some of the focuses that we look into. So we look at uh, participation and inclusion and different ways that we can uh, build that into the program and empower people. We look at ways that we can build sharing into the program. And we also look at ways that uh, we can find so that people understand what's going on effectively. Um, and so some of the different roles of open science communities and some of the different things that we will touch upon over the next uh, few weeks will include sharing your data. We will talk about sharing your source code uh, if you have source code. So we're not expecting everyone to do so, um, but some of you may do so. Uh, equally, we, we talk a bit about sharing hardware, but again, it's fine if you don't have hardware. These are just some of the different things that you may encounter. Um, and it's also good to be aware of as well. Um, 
Now we talk about dissemination, such as sharing your papers and protocols in the more traditional ways, and that, that can be open access, or if you're sharing your results early, uh, that's pre-printing. I think that's actually been highlighted a lot recently with COVID. Um, perhaps preprints have become a lot more common and in the spotlight than they used to be. Uh, we talk about sharing reviews for your papers, uh, sharing training such as open education, and also collaborating openly with the public. Um, so citizen science may not always be pinpointed as a method of open science, but it definitely does involve uh, a lot of openness. Um, and also just generally networking and connecting with others in your fields. Um, so these are a few of the things that we cover. It's definitely not the only things we cover, but some of the things to look forward to over the next few weeks. We'll also invite a lot of guest speakers to speak on these specific topics. Um, and one of the most important premises of open life science is that openness should be built in by design to what you're doing rather than by accident uh, or by a default. Um, and to explain why that is, so this is a very sort of tech oriented um, explanation, but looking at 160 tech companies, um, this study actually found that the level of strategic intent and openness tended to correlate with market performance. Um, or to make that slightly less techy sounding, basically when you intentionally design the ways that people interact with you and the ways that people join your community and the ways that people continue to participate in your community, it tends to be a lot more effective than if you simply put something online and say, please come. Uh, so we, we try and focus on building these effective, useful, inclusive communities that actually are designed to have people participating and enjoying that participation. Um, uh, yeah, design openness into your work and don't let it be a thoughtless default. Um, so, achieve positive culture change. Yes, okay, <laughs> right. So one thing that we're looking at also is allowing you to achieve a positive culture change within your community. So we don't want to accept the status quo in some places that may be things aren't open or in other places that the opening, open communities aren't necessarily inclusive or um, empowering. So we, we, we like to encourage that we, we share a leadership, we share a vision, um, and we push towards the things that are actually meaningful. And I think that's everything for the intro. Um, 